YouTube Oz it going. The Goat House is back with a preview and things to watch for the Baltimore Ravens heading into 2024. Playlist on the channel with more teams. We're going to get to every single NFL team here. Going over what to watch, what we could expect, some questions, players to watch, games to watch, and some fans' takes. It's Ravens Day. Number three, year two Munkin offense. So Todd Munkin obviously took over as the offense coordinator last year, and we knew that was a pretty good hire. Pretty pretty good uh, step up from Greg Roman, and we, we figured it would work out pretty well with what the Ravens had, but... To be the best team for most of the season, best team in the regular season, you know, for it to work right away as good as it did, uh, I think is a really good sign, you know, for this year. So a little bit more experience. And we'll come kind of circle back to this when we get to my number one. But yeah, I think good learning experience for, from Munkin. Obviously, he was in the NFL in the past, but just coming from college, the NFL. And and he was pretty damn good all, all year. I thought it was a very poorly called game in, in the playoff game against the Chiefs, but maybe a learning experience, learning experience from Lamar Jackson trying to pick up that offense because it is a bit different than Greg Roman. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's something to be excited about. Year two, learning it more, just experience. I, I want to keep saying experience. And another another thing, another offseason for Munkin to have a say on – his type of players in the to get in the off season for his offense. And I don't think it, it's definitely not all up to him on who they get. And uh, we kind of can circle back to that as well, but um, focusing on the running back position, but yeah, just another off season. I mean, he had to say in the draft and what type of players for his offense line and, you know, drafting Tez Walker, it just feels like a guy for his offense. So um, yeah, so it's another reason, another another off season for getting more weapons for his offense. Even though on paper it might look like they're worse because they lost some offense alignment, you know, traded away Morgan Moses. On paper, the receiver unit doesn't look as good, but OBJ was a little underwhelming last year, and young guys could step up. So kind of another, another one of those teams where. Just because of big names, people might think they're going to get worse. And, and, and you know, I don't think that would be the reason. I think the reason would be, well, maybe an offensive line. Your offensive line could struggle, but I think the reason would be maybe if they were to. I don't think they're going to struggle. I think everyone agrees they're going to be a good team. But if they were to take a step down, maybe more so losing some of the coaches that they lost. But ah, they're just so consistently good. But ex I'm excited about Todd Monk in year two. And his offense, uh, number two, D could yeah, kind of we just talked on a little bit the defense the. The defense could miss coaches, their coaches like Mike McDonald mainly, uh, or they they could be a fresh defense. And what I mean by that is Zach Orr, young defensive coach, obviously familiar with what the Ravens do, you know, their defense. And he's expected to run the same defense. Supposed to be Mike McDonald's defense or or his version of that. So there's not just it is not they don't have a new guy stepping up to just trash that defense that really shouldn't be the case it should be about the same how it's run the same defense but he kind of has a little bit of his flavor a little bit of his thoughts into it uh and and it's uh you know some of these young defensive coaches are kind of taking over young coaches in general um so it either you know they could we could be going like halfway through the year like man the defense I'm, I don't see any scenario the defense isn't good. But we could be going the defense a little underwhelming. They miss McDonald. They miss some of those coaches. Or it's just as good because it's just Ravens defense. Those players are good. But also because it's teams are kind of maybe starting to realize like, okay, this is the Mike McDonald Ravens defense. And then, but it's not really that. It's again, Orr's take on that defense. So it could be a little different where it throws teams off and they have really good players from top to bottom, really. But. Um, like the secondary, I mean, Kyle Hamilton's one of my favorite players in the league. Uh, and then Roquan, maybe the best linebacker, the top two linebacker in football. And they have other pieces as well. So defense obviously would be good, but that, that's kind of the big question. Will, will, will we be saying we missed, they missed the coaches or is it like, uh, they're just so good. They're just so they're, they're getting better. There's play ups, players developing and Orr's doing such a great job and mixing his kind of own philosophy in there. So kind of a big question there, what everyone's kind of looking out for, um, you know, with them. I think everyone agrees that the Ravens will be good. It's like one of those sure thing, good teams. Uh, even when they're beat up, even when they're hurt, they're a challenge, right? We say, we've seen that a few years ago. Um, but I think the question for people is, will they be as good? Will they take a little bit of a step down because they lost so many coaches? Uh, and 
you know, offensive line situation, perhaps. So that's kind of what everyone's, you know, in the back of their minds, what they're wondering. But we'll see. There could be some factors, like I've been mentioning, that could actually make them better or just as good, really. Uh, the number one, I kind of wanted to put, yeah, just watch out for this running game with like teams aren't going to be able to, de- like, it's going to be so hard to game plan for Lamar slash Derrick Henry. I mean, actually, it's one of those things you can game plan for. It's like you watch it on film and it's like, all right, they're going to run the football. There's two guys that really can run the football, but once you get to game day, once you get on the field, it's a whole different story. Uh, But I want to step further and say, you know, that and just how good the run game is because of that will elevate this passing game. I think people really aren't talking about that too much. I think everyone knows it's a run. It's going to be a strong run game. But, well, yeah, first off, Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson, I think some people will say, well, they're going to run the ball, so stack the box. You can't really do that because you can hand the ball off to Derrick Henry with his physicality on the, just in the in, on the inside, and then you know, but you also have to worry about Lamar getting outside. You have to worry about those read options because it either could be going inside or Lamar outside. But Derrick Henry is actually a very good outside runner as well. Very sneaky. People don't talk about that enough. He's really good on those slip screens as well. Um, so that's fantastic. And I, I think teams are going to, they're going to have to crowd the box in some way. And they're going to have, when they do that, they're going to have guys, you know, inside linebackers are going to have to focus just on the inside lanes, uh, for, for Derrick Henry, but somebody's going to have to be spying Lamar Jackson. And this is really going to be, and it's getting, they're going to be, you're going to be thinking they're going to be, you know, read option could be RPO. They can, and then Lamar can keep it, sling it. Um, you know, so it's, it's going to open up the passing game and Todd Munkin has a pretty good playbook and he's a pretty good coach in term in general, but in terms of the passing game, you see he wants to pass. You look at the playoff game, they should have ran the ball more. They should have understand what was working and how to beat the chiefs. And they were just insisting on airing it downfield uh, or just airing it in general. And they really could have won that game running the football. So yeah, we talked about a little bit earlier. Could learn from this mistakes. It's just getting more experience with the Ravens and the NFL. And what the Ravens went ahead and did is they added one of the very best running backs in football, which will kind of help Monk in like, okay, I got to run the ball. Um, but Or it just it just adds a little bit more to maybe, maybe what he, he needs or what he's lacking in his offense. So um, I, I think it just helps them in general. So the passing game could get better because, again, Lamar Jackson, Todd Monk in year two, but the run game really could elevate it. It's really on the offense line, the receivers, which are the, the receiver group as a whole, um, which is the biggest question. So some questions here on if they'll be as good. We know this will be a really good team. Some players to watch. I'm going to go with Trenton Simpson Simpson uh, at number three, linebacker from Clemson, a rookie a year ago. Uh, he's going to have to step in right now. Um, you know, and, and they've had linebackers step up. They have defensive players step up all the time. They end up being as good or better than expected. And he got a chance at the end of the year, regular season, to get in there and play. And he's making some flashy plays. And he is that rangy, athletic downhill or sideline to sideline type linebacker but it was interesting when they drafted him because they were more of like you know they'll, they'll they always mix it up a little bit but base defense was 3-4 and Simpson played 4-3 outside for Clemson and even guarded from the you ever know, even covered from the slot a bit um so it's like it, yeah is it gonna be like that Patrick Queen replacement you know another row quantum like inside thumper he's not really that but he looked pretty good when stepping in last year and now he's getting the call like it's his time to step up try to replace Patrick Queen off a career year for him which got him a big contract with the rival Steelers you know so we're watching Simpson with Simpson and he can be super flashy um he should be pretty good in coverage but uh how will he be uh you know Getting downhill in, in, uh, in you know, plugging gaps uh, inside the tackles. Uh, that's kind of the big question. So, uh, a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure for Simpson. So, definitely watching him. Uh, number two, got to go with the King, got to go Derrick Henry for the, I mean, basically what I already explained. Like, uh, he hasn't had Lamar Jackson as quarterback, has not had that. You know, he's been, there's some good, pretty good Titans teams. I mean, he may, may have been the main reason for the offense. He was the main reason for the offense on those good teams, but hasn't had Lamar Jackson. There's other things that teams got to worry about. Um, it's going to help him. Like it's going to, it's going to help him tremendously. And it's going to be, it's, it's a little different than the Titans offense, obviously because of Lamar, but it could help him. And it, it's just good. It's weird to see him not in the Titans. It's going to be weird to see him away, you know, in a Ravens Jersey, not in the Titans, but, um, yeah, the Titans offensive line was, and there's questions about the Ravens offensive line, but the Titans offensive line was probably the worst in football last year, and teams 
at least for most of the year, weren't really worried about past, you know, uh, stopping the pass. You know, Levis started to get going a little bit, but especially early in the year, so a lot of stacked boxes, but really no threat. Like, if you stack the box against the Ravens, it's still, like, you got to worry about Lamar and you got to worry about Derrick Henry. So it could really, it, basically what I'm getting to, a lot more things going to be open for him. It's going to be really fun to watch. Number one, I definitely got to go with second-year receiver Zay Flowers, who impressed in his rookie year. A lot of people were very impressed with him and overall overall did a good job in his rookie year. To me, it was actually a little bit of a roller coaster ride uh, for me. And I talked about it during the year. Not too many people talked about it. Overall, impressed. Overall, really good. Really dynamic. Really flashy, athletic after the catch. Very fun to watch. Uh, was their best receiver as a rookie, like a game changer. So love all those things, love what he could be. But it was a little bit of a roller coaster. Like he would have some bad drops throughout the year. There was a there was a game where there was a, quite a few drops in, in, in or maybe a couple games like that. Um, you know, and a lot of his production kind of, and he was productive inside and out, but I thought most of his production was inside when the Ravens are a little thin at receiver. Do you, you want him to elevate his game outside? I thought his best plays, and he did leak out downfield. He got separation downfield. Maybe it's more of the Ravens offense where there wasn't more action for him downfield, but a lot of his best plays were underneath, you know, screen pass, uh, slant, hitch, and then we'll go to work after the catch, which is nothing wrong with that. That's fantastic uh, for him, but you, uh, he kind of relied on that. Took him a bit to get his first touchdown. His first touchdown came against Titans against uh, an edge rusher, so he should score. So I want less of a roller coaster. And it was his rookie year; he, he exceeded expectations. But I want less of a little bit of a roller coaster. I want more consistency, more consistent catching the ball and elevate his game. Be able to. Uh, I'm not really worried about separation, but be able to run those downfield routes a little better. Be able to, um, you know, catch the ball a little more consistently. Um, you know, and he, and it's another one to watch because he's obviously got a bad taste in his mouth at the way it ended with the mistake against the chiefs. So, uh, at the end there, but you know, the, the, obviously the fumble at the goal line, but so he's definitely, uh, he's ready. He's probably ready to go. So let's see how he bounces back from that. But a guy that, yeah, that's what it comes down. It's the type of player that if he doesn't add to his game, he's going to stay about the same as what he was last year. Uh, that, that type of player, which is a good dynamic player. Uh, but it's that type of player that if he adds a little bit more, you know, playing a little bit, be more effective on the outside, uh, you know, uh, catching a little, you know, being a little more consistent with his hands and being a little more active down the field, not relying after the catch, then he's going to, it's going to be scary. So he's either going to stay about the same or he's going to be insanely good. Like, cause he's got everything. If he adds what he's just the parts he's missing, which we're talking about it because he's only a second year player. So he could do that. Uh, but if he adds that, then he's probably a complete receiver in a, you know, would be a very good one then. So definitely watch another, another, I can't believe I almost didn't mention it. The Maybe the biggest reason he's on here is that the, yeah, the Ravens receiver unit's a little questionable, a little questionable right now. They lost some guys. Aguilar's a decent piece. He's still there. They got him back. Um, Tez Walker, I think could surprise. He's got some upside. It's probably a guy that, you know, more of an upside guy, but we'll see. Uh, Rashad, Rashad Bateman's been underwhelming, but you know he has that upside, and there's been some talk, some hype about him stepping up. I could definitely see it. Could definitely see the step up, but by how much? If Walker surprises, how good is he going to be? Aguilar, we know what we're going to get from him. Like, decent player. Uh, we know the tight end. Uh as re- tight ends as receivers are going to be pretty good. But it's basically, Zay Flowers has to, has to carry this group a little bit. He's going to have, so he's going to have to step up, uh, you know, even though we know he's solid already and was really impressive as a rookie. So definitely can't wait to watch him. Games I'm watching, I'm not even going to put the Chiefs week one on there. I mean, we can't wait. It's the opening game. Ravens-Chiefs rematch of that playoff game. It's going to be huge. I mean, whoever gets out of the win, it could decide. Even, you know, we can fast forward and maybe that one game's the difference. But it's the first game of the year. Um, it, there's going to be some sloppiness. Anything could go. We saw it the Lions Chiefs last year. We usually we typically see it every year with the first three weeks of all games. Um, you know, it, it's so it, it's. I'm not going to have major takeaways from that game. I just can't wait for it, you know. But I'm looking at that Bills game. I had it for the Bills video as well. Week four, I always talk about it. First few weeks is a lot of nonsense. It's just get out of there with the win. Week four, week five around there, it's like, all right, now we're going to learn some things. Now we're going to see some real football. And that's going to be fun. Bill, Bills, Ravens, I uh, believe it's prime time. Lamar versus Josh Allen. Oof. It's 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 going to be good teams. It's going to be fun. You got to put the hard bowl on here. Um, Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh versus John Harbaugh, Ravens versus Chargers, going to be a lot of fun. Um, Greg Roman's there. That's another reason Greg Roman's with the Chargers. So, 
you know, maybe he has some takes, maybe the Raven, you know, maybe the Ravens have some, you know, thoughts on, on his, on his offense. Um, you know, so they have game plan factors there for both sides, uh, you know, even not just the hardball thing, but, uh, you know, Mike, this is a Mike McDonald built defense for the Ravens. And, um, you know, I, I, there's some Michigan background guys on both sides for the chargers. So they, uh, may be familiar with the style. So there's a lot of things going on with that game and the chargers can be very sneaky. Actually, I thought the, Ch- the chargers Ravens game on prime time this past year, it was one game, but I was a little underwhelmed by the Ravens in that game. I thought they, you know, the Chargers kept shooting themselves in the foot, and that's the reason why they lost that game. The Ravens really, and the defense really was very solid creating plays, but I thought the Chargers played them pretty well last year, and that was with bad coaching and didn't really have the team together there. So um, it was a prime time game, yeah. Um, so that could be a good game for several reasons, and I like the Eagles one in Week 13. They didn't play each other last year, obviously, so good to see something like that. Um, you know, same like the, you know, the bills game, but Jalen hurts versus Lamar Jackson two you know, very good runners and just really good balanced teams. Like those two teams, like we're pretty confident they're going to be good. Like both sides of the ball, they should be pretty solid. I mean, people are still questioning the Eagles defense, I guess the way they ended, but that should be a really solid game. And you start to kind of get in the playoff mode a little bit around that time. Um, so birds versus birds in that one, uh, the, some fans takes, Riley Griffin, can Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews both get enough passing volume in this Ravens offense? Yeah, I guess because it's such a run-heavy offense. They're going to be running the ball a ton, so they're going to get action, obviously. I think Riley knows that, but it's like, are they going to get what they deserve? Like, these guys need the ball because how good they are. Um, I think they will. I think Munkin, it's just Munkin's way. You know, I don't think they're going to overdo Derrick Henry, actually. I really don't, so... um, but I guess the other question is in the passing game, it's really do you have to game plan for much else uh, in terms of who you're covering, you know, compared to these two guys? Somebody else is going to have to step up. Uh, we'll see. Cam Sullivan with teams so worried about Lamar and Henry with their passing game. But, yeah, that's kind of what we were talking about. Kind of what I'm thinking as well. So maybe a little bit of pressure on Lamar to kind of take another step up as a passer. Uh, will adding Henry be enough to make up for getting you know, getting worse on the O-line? Uh, yeah, the O-line was is the biggest question for me for offense. I really don't have any questions anywhere else. Um, I mean, there were some of these guys. I think somebody out of those other guys will step up at receiver. Uh, the offensive line is the biggest question, but Derrick Henry familiar with running with not so great offensive lines. Um, it's a good question. We'll see. We'll see how, how that goes together. Uh, can Nate Wiggins stay healthy? Yeah. Some, some durability concerns with him and because he's thin and he's had some injuries. I can Humphrey Wiggins Hamilton be one of the better secondary trios in the league, it probably, it probably could be. And where's Humphreys play at? He did not quite what he was like three, four years ago. But uh, if he played like that, it would not surprise at all. Kind of about staying healthy. Hamilton's one of the very best in the league. Um, you know, so that should be pretty fun. Um, Anthony Kramer, life without McDonald and Patrick Queen. Yeah, bring up Patrick Queen. You know, will they miss him? We kind of why we talked about Trent Simpson. Uh, but yeah, McDonald, they... they could see a scenario where they desperately miss him. I could see a scenario where it's just the, the Ravens defense, you know. Um, talking about Derrick Henry, yeah, looking for Zay Flowers to take the next step, and other guys, and for other guys in the unit to step up. Yeah, who's it going to be? Bateman, a lot of hype on him. Does Walker surprise and be better than expected? Um, some concerns about the old line. Talked about that, and there's Nate Wiggins again. Yeah, if Wiggins on the field, it could be really, he can be really good right away. Playmaker could be a really, this could be a big time playmaking defense, getting their hands on the ball a bit. Uh, then a few more. Um, I like that Jordan here was talking about, uh, yeah, Geno Stone, could some, one of the young guys or somebody step up for him. He was more of a rotation guy, so are they just relying on the starters just being, you know, that good, that many snaps? You know, so that's a good question as well. Talked about Simpson. Uh, but I like that he talked about, yeah, who steps up in terms of edge. I actually didn't touch on that during the video, so it's good that he brought up. Somebody's got to step up there. Van Noy, Robinson, Adisa, Isaac, uh, away, and Ojabo. I, Ojabo's got to step up here. I, I think, I know his mission guy, McDonald's gone, but I, I'm thinking now is the time. Like, nope, he didn't have any expectations before. Now we're going to have a little bit of expectations. Uh, I'm watching I'm watching for him, but somebody's going to have to step up. No clowny. Van, uh, Van Noy, almost said Van Ness. Van Noy, uh Played pretty well for them, actually, last year, but he's not getting any better, though. 
So we'll see. And then Eggnoggin brought up just, Justin Matabuke, and that's something I want to touch on in this video as well. So glad he brought that up. Uh, a guy I almost put under the players to watch because he was always like a decent, like sneaky, underrated player before last year. But man, did he break out last year. Like he really broke out. He was insane. He got that contract based off of, I don't want to say based off one year because I think they knew he can be that. You can see the upside before last year. So it's not like shockingly he broke out and we'll give him a contract off that. It kind of makes sense to them that he that he grew and he can still grow, grow, still be growing. So um, in terms of talent, not height or anything. Um, so that's why they gave him the contract. So we can't really sit here and say that was like a shocking or like a one-year wonder. I, I don't see why not, why he can't be as good. But that's something we're watching for. Like he just got that big contract. Realistically, he had one big year. Like... A lot different compared to the rest, even though you can kind of see it, like I said, and he was underrated. Uh, you know, so where's he going to be this year? I think I, I'm not going to be one to make a big deal out of that. It's I'm going to make a big deal now, like it's something to watch because I think people will be talking about it. But, like, if he doesn't get as many sacks, like, I'm not worried. Like, if he doesn't play quite as good, I, mean, I think he's going to play in the range. If he plays, like, bad, then, okay, maybe we, we can talk about it. But I don't see that. But I, I can see people being like, oh, he got, like, a four less sacks, you know, like, uh, or what X amount of less pressures like wow did they really give him that contract and I think that's like overreaction so I can definitely see that I'm probably I'm gonna predict that I'm not gonna be worrying about it at all like he's either gonna play just as good whether the stats show it or not he could scary he could play better just because he's he was kind of like a raw upside guy and he just he's just getting going so and they still got really good players on defense around him so uh, but definitely did want to talk about that so glad he brought it up but that We'll wrap it up for the Ravens video. We have quite a few of these now uh, on the channel, a playlist full of them, and a lot more teams to get to, though. We will get to them and a lot more content in the offseason before our weekly pick them start. You know, can't wait for that. But that's going to do it. Check out our Twitter link pinned in the comments and uh, sponsors, Liquid IV, code GOAT, percentage off. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.